cafe anyway. Yeah, hey, hey, it's Mike. Mike's Daily Podcast. Thank you for joining me here at Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. And this is episode 2591. Mike's Daily Podcast. It looks like it's spring and that the rain has ended. We had so much rain, it's hard to pretend that we. We didn't like water anymore We didn't We were done It was it No more Please stop the rain Who will stop the rain? I guess that's a question for Mike's Daily Podcast John Fogarty Magnification Credence But it's FF episode Mike's 2591 Daily 2591 Podcast And I have Yeah Magnification A new show that today bringing you you will travel into the incredible universe have uh, all these things blooming everywhere and pollen is everywhere little bugs are everywhere mosquitoes are everywhere that's going to be the fun part here in california with all the water we had mosquitoes yes that's something we don't really have a huge issue with in california unlike other places in the south like in florida alabama one of those states it's the national bird and yes i know they serve a purpose in the ecological system but this is the 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 bumps the welts that's no fun but here we are today on this what is today it's um national living donor campaign day national living donor day ah it's also National Pet Day, so if you have a pet, that's wonderful. You should go and hug your pet. It's National Submarine Day. <laughs> Seriously, what? Did the submarine company or industry need some kind of day to celebrate them? But, I mean, they're fascinating vehicles, really. And here's today's podcast picture. Going underwater. The podcast picture is not of a submarine, but of this wonderful walk that I took today in Podcastro Valley. And it was, it's so green. It's utterly green and beautiful and looks like Ireland here in California. See the picture at mikesdailypodcast.com because it'll soothe you when you look at it like a cheese fondue. Oh, that's another day. Today is National Cheese Fondue Day and National 8 Track Tape Day. Does anybody have any of those? That's just not... Do they exist still? The late great Basil the Boxer. I don't think I ever played him anything off an 8-track tape. I don't think he would have liked it. I played him lots of stuff off a CD. And he appreciated that. He liked the clarity. The clear sound. No hiss. No skips. No little... Like you would do with a record. But some people love that. Hey, so 8-track tapes. Weren't those uh, mono? I don't... You know, I I was alive when 8-track tapes were the the big thing. But I I just was not... My parents never bought one. I was not really exposed to them. Yeah, me, Mr. Music. Speaking of Mr. Music and anyone who loves music, who doesn't love a barbershop quartet? Oh, wow. A lot of hands went up just then. National Barbershop Quartet Day is also today. Thank you, people that sent me that. Do you know what tomorrow is? Maybe you're listening to this tomorrow since it is late in the day on Tuesday. Wednesday is going to be National Grilled Cheese Sandwich Day. And for those of you who don't know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich, well, the recipe is in the name. So really rethink your brain use in today's world. It'll be National Only Child Day tomorrow on the 12th. Or maybe it's today, depending on where and when you're listening to this. But I am an only child. My lovely lady friend's an only child. It's very, maybe it makes sense why I'm doing what I'm doing today, this podcast. I had to amuse myself as a little one. No friends. I had to create imaginary friends. 
And they're still good friends of mine today. They're going to stop by actually a little bit later on outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. National Licorice Day will be on the 12th on Wednesday. And that is that wonderful chewy substance that you can either get in that red, like cherry berry-ish sort of flavor. Or that black, I don't know what that is, fennel. Uh, Is it Sambuca? Something like that flavor black licorice people love that black licorice and going back to listening to they used to call records licorice pizzas it'll also be national big wind day not big wind but big wind and that could be a lot of things i'm thinking and national colorado day will be on wednesday for those of you in the fine state of co Colorado I've only been And I only moved I almost Moved To And I've only been to Colorado Springs Which seemed very nice But I ended up not living there And there's someone In in the company that I work for That lives there And I tried talking to him about Hey Colorado Springs How do you like living there I almost moved there And he did not respond to me He was one of those emails One of those emailers That had the worst etiquette Email etiquette And there is this horrible horrible thing going on In the world Of people who cannot email Cannot respond to emails correctly CC too many people on the emails Or people that get the emails They know that there's a lot of people Being CC'd They should probably reply also Everyone sees the email Nope they just reply straight to you And ignore the reply all button There are people that don't check their emails ever Even though there's important emails that come to them And need to be responded in only the format of emails It just goes on and on As we go outside a cafe anyway We're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley The last place on earth Anyway The IMF said that five years from now Global growth is expected to be around 3%. That will be the load, lowest medium term forecast in world economic outlook for over 30 years. Wow. That's interesting. Also, Gen Z is saving more for retirement than previous generations. They're they're beating the millennials. For saving for retirement That's fascinating We used to think Nah Younger generations They don't care Well apparently they do In 2006 30% of employees Participated in their company's 401k plan Versus 62% In 2021 So it has doubled Since 2006 Blame the widespread adoption Of auto enrollment In retirement plans Might be the reason for that increase Open AI's newest language model The GPT-4 Breezed through the US medical licensing exam One physician said that that AI chatbot Was better than many doctors he's observed When it came to clinical diagnosis Scary There is so much wrong with AI When it comes to I think I mean it's pretty amazing What they can do When they take somebody's voice And they generate a whole AI After them Like let's say they take Trump And they make They make an AI So that Trump You can make Trump say whatever you want But at some point You can tell You can spot the difference And go Ah that doesn't sound quite right Elon Musk painted over the W On Twitter sign At San Francisco's headquarters I don't know if he specifically went up there and painted over it Probably had someone do it for him Twitter's landlord said the company uh, Told the company that the sign was legally required to read as Twitter And not the other thing A little bit of of tit for tat there Housing market data In recent weeks has offered some signs of stabilization 
That's interesting. The housing downturn coming to an end. This as the spring selling season begins to ramp up. It was doing so poorly. I remember I had to sell my mom's house a year ago and I had a very limited amount of time. The the real estate agent was like, we got to get on this. A, because the market's starting to tank. B, Florida is about to get hit by a bunch of hurricanes. Actually, that wasn't true. Well, it was true, but we had a little bit more time than what my real estate agent was saying. We could have waited three months, but then it would have been pretty dang close. And it probably would have affected the sale anyway. People too afraid to go out and check out the house and because they don't want to get stuck in a hurricane. Mortgage rates have dipped to 6.28%, marking the fourth straight weekly drop. So interest rates have been dropping. Ian Shepardson, the chief economist at Pantheon, said prices have fallen by about 5% since the summer. About 5%. But we look for a further 15% decline over the next year, restoring the pre-COVID price to income ratio. Fascinating. Looks like it's getting better, according to Pantheon. The affordable U.S. regions are leading the recovery, and those regions are the Midwest and the South. Lots of houses being sold and bought there. The median sales price for existing homes slid 0.2%. So it is now at $363,000. A year ago, it was a little more expensive. About 57% of homes sold in February were on the market for less than a month. 57%. So, not quite half. So, if you're trying to sell your house, you could be one of the lucky ones and sell it quickly or be the other half and not so lucky. But we wish you well. One other thing is I got this little bit of information and it came to me from something called N the N from the N F I B the N fib and that stands for the National Federation of Incredibly Brilliant Incredibly Brilliant what no Actually, it does not stand for that. It's the National Federation of Independent Business. There we go. So yes, they care about the small businesses, the little businesses. Uh, Small business owners, it said in this email, small business owners are cynical about future economic conditions. Hiring plans fell to their lowest level since May of 2020. Going back three years, but strong consumer spending has kept Main Street alive and supported strong labor demand. Unless you're in San Francisco. This email doesn't say that, but they are saying it is tougher for Californians with all the regulation and the different things that affect California. Um, The... It says uh, California consistently exacerbates with regulation and the index is a national poll, but it doesn't take a leap of imagination to say small business in California arguably have it even worse given our legislatures continually hitting them with more leave time mandates, tax increases, and other regulatory gut punches. So what I heard on a public radio station, an NPR station, NPR leaning a little to the left, many would say, and what I heard was a program that consisted of a lot of business owners from San Francisco and the stuff they were talking about, they were talking about predominantly that they're getting robbed. A lot. People are breaking in. People are holding guns to them. People are threatening their lives. It's tough to run a business. You're getting robbed all the time. There's so much crime in San Francisco. 
So much so that today it was announced that Amazon, who owns Whole Foods, they've decided that Whole Foods in San Francisco has got to go. They're shutting it down for a while and relocating all the employees because their lives are being threatened. One other thing it says here in what they call the optimism index is 43% of owners reported job openings that were hard to fill. That's very interesting. As someone who has been tasked with finding employees, it's very difficult. Very difficult to find someone to get just the right person. Uh, 26% of owners reported few qualified applicants for their open positions. That just that there, there's not enough qualified applicants for what needs to be filled. And 27 reported that there was no one qualified for the positions that they had open. And finally, this according to the NI, uh, the NFIB, the net percent of owners who expect real sales to be higher deteriorated six points from February to a net negative 15%. It's been dropping. I guess there's more about this at NFIB.com. Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcast Valley, the last place on earth. Look who's here. <laughs> Hi, Mac. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? It's a disgruntled field player. Tell you what. What? Well, the problem is, is we got a Democratic legislator and legislature here in California, and therefore the Democratic legislature does not do things like make bills to help small people, like bills, you know, because I'm just a bill. Yeah, I'm only a bill, and I'm sitting here in Capitol Hill, I'll tell you what. What? That's my song I was singing. Wow, you went a little schoolhouse rock there as you were bashing Democrats. Fascinating. Look who else is here. Hello, Mike. I'm Mike Delicious Root Beer. Have some right now. Hey, boo. Oh, uh, boo? Oh, uh, boo. All right. I will drink it right now. Drink it right now, can't you? Oh, boo. I'm not going to drink under duress. Mmm. Wow, that was so good. That was like a, a root beer that maybe I would pay several thousand dollars for at Whole Foods. Yeah, it's really good. I'm glad you like it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Thank you. I'm glad uh, that you made it. Well, we covered a lot on today's podcast. <laughs> we kind of jumped around like a House of Pain song, but I hope... I hope you go and enjoy some music and realize that the song called Never Gonna Let You Go by Sergio Mendez, although Sergio Mendez is not singing Never Gonna Let You Go. But according to Rick Beato, that is the most difficult pop song of all time. Yes. And he said it's because... Not never, never going to give you up, never going to let you, no, it's never going to let you go. I'm going to hold you in my arms forever. It, it's, uh, who, who sings on that song? The front panel will close automatically. I, Please remain seated. Because they always credit it with uh, Sergio Mendez, but it actually, he was the producer and plays on it. It was written by Cynthia Well, Cynthia Wheel, rather, and Barry Mann. They were a husband and wife songwriting team. Wheel wrote the lyrics while Mann wrote the music. And according to Rick Beato, that music, the chord progression, is extremely difficult because basically every beat has a different chord. And the chords just jump around. He said the most complex pop song of all time due to, its, due to its frequent key changes and use of inverted chords. Fascinating. Ah, the singer was Stevie Woods. Oh, no, wait a minute. Dionne Warwick first recorded it. Uh, and then Stevie Woods recorded it as well. But then Sergio Mendez, the famous Brazilian musician and band leader, 
That's right. Oh, it's sung by Joe Pizzullo. That's right. Joe Pizzullo and Lisa Miller. A lot of Z's. <laughs> you got Pizzullo with two Z's and Lisa who has two E's and one Z. Fascinating. They had originally, uh, rather, uh, Cynthia Wheel and Barry Mann, who wrote the song, had originally submitted the song to Earth, Wind, and Fire, but they decided not to record the song. I think they would have done a great job. Sergio Mendez said preparing for the release of his 1983 album was, he was saying, all the other songs on the album were up and festive. I needed a ballad on the album just to change the pace a bit. The song reached number four, uh, and his previous best showing on the Billboard Hot 100 was The Look of Love in 1968. That song went to, oh, it doesn't, let's, well, find out in a second, but the uh, Never Gonna Let You Go song went to number one on the adult contemporary chart and actually number 28 on the R&B chart at the time. Fascinating. The uh, Look of Love, The Look of Love, with Dusty Springfield, that one went to, it, to, uh, I want to see, oh, did that go to number one? Mike Myers, by the way, used that song in one of the Austin Powers movie. And he said that that song inspired the creation of uh, the Austin Powers character itself so i don't have an exact let's see oh number 22 so yeah he did much better sergio did much better with his song never gonna let you go because that went to number four okay there you go next show it's going to be the wonderful madame rutabaga valentino and bison bentley tell your friends about the podcast the wonderful podcast that jumps around all over the place enjoy Whatever day this is, perhaps it's National Only Child Day, or m- maybe it's National t- uh, t- uh, Pina Colada Day, or Z Day, or as other people in the world say, Z Day. Whatever day it is, I hope it's a good one. And with more on how I wish it's a good day for you, and with more ways to reach me, like the phone number 510-228-4640, it's A-Frank. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.